Hi, this is Kane Hodder, Victor Crowley, Jason from Friday the 13th. You're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. All right, and welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal. This is Annabelle Lecter. And that would make me terrible, Troy. Right. And we have a plethora of guests on tonight. We have the cast, the director of All Through the House. We have Todd Nunez. Yes, I'm here. Yes, the director. We have (laughs) the killer himself, Lito Velasco. Hello. We have Rachel in the film, Ashley Mary Nunez. Hi. (laughs) We have Gia, uh, Natalie Montero. Hello. And Sheila, Jessica Cameron. Hey, hey, hey. Excellent. So all through the house, Christmas horror movie, which we're all big fans of here on on Without Your Head. Oh, yeah. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people are drawn to uh, Christmas horror films? Well, because I think there's an element to Christmas that's kind of creepy. That, that It's that element that, uh, as kids, we never really talked about, but was there. You know, this Santa, this guy who comes into your house at night, he's a stranger, he's leaving your presents, your parents are always telling you not to talk to strangers. So Christmas definitely lends itself to a, a creepy side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I like to exploit that. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, everyone here, if uh, for people who don't know about the movie yet, uh, you want to give them a quick idea of what it's about? Well, it's an 80s-inspired slasher film uh, about a psycho Santa that goes on a killing spree in the town of Napa. And uh, he does some pretty drastic uh, things to the, <laughs> the, the people uh-huh. there. Yes, he does. There, I... <laughs> a bit. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to spoil the movie for anybody, but there, but there are several severed uh, uh, body parts. Oh yeah, <laughs> my favorite thing: a severed body part. <laughs> exactly. Uh, did you save any of those? Maybe they could be uh, prizes, or uh, you could oh God, sign them, yeah. or I don't know. Yeah, we do have some of them. Yeah, and uh, a couple of uh, particular ones are missing. So you go figure. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I didn't see it. <laughs> Were they just casts? That's the big question. Yeah, we're going to have to search the cast for a couple of those. It wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> I don't know. I think Sorry. Jessica has her collection at home. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll run through everybody here. Uh, how did everyone get involved in the film? Well, my sister... Hello. ...has been involved in a lot of my productions ever since I was a kid, and she was a kid, and she played mm-hmm. Killer Teddy Bear and Demons and all that, so it just was sort of a natural progression for us. I was born into oh. the horror genre because of my brother. <laughs> so cool. it's natural. What's the age difference, if you don't mind my asking? You don't have to tell me how old you are, but what's the age difference? I don't even know. You have to count on our fingers. <laughs> I'm just wondering if you're the influence like what kind of stuff were you feeding this poor child because Troy yeah, Neil's yeah, brother he's about what 10 years older than you Nine yeah, years. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, more than that and, but uh, she uh, was subjected to all the horror movies at a very young age mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. and she grew up not even wanting to cut so she you know did not affect her as like no. some people might fear you know exposing your children to these kinds of uh, movies Especially that the, the early '80s movies. She's seen them all. Yeah, I like to think I came out all right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> she wants she wants to think that. Yes, but. we'll let her think that. Uh, Alito, how did you get involved? Um, well, Todd and I go pretty far back. 2006, is that correct? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Todd was a producer on a film that I acted in um, that was directed by one of our very good friends, uh, Patricia McFall, and she directed this film. For the LA Film School, correct? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I was the lead in her film along with her little sister. And Todd and I hit it off on set because we both are comic book devotees and we're both Friday the 13th and horror geeks. So we just hit it off instantly, spent a lot of time together and just built a reputation or a relationship from there, started hanging out. And then um, every time he has a project, he's kind enough to come to me to ask me to be involved. And, um, so he had this project that he needed, you know, a killer to, to be in. And he said, are you interested in being the killer? Because 
I spend a lot of my time uh, cosplaying for events and fundraisers and, you know, at conventions and stuff. And he knew that I had experience playing Michael Myers and uh, Ghostface and Freddy Krueger and such. So he asked me if I wanted to do it. And I said, of course. So that's how I came on crew. Cool. I, when you were started that, I thought you were going to say I spent a lot of my time killing. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> People and I was an advertisement. Uh, yep. <laughs> I was going to, but then I realized we were live. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Natalie, how did you get involved? Well, me and Ash actually were in acting class together. And um, I was lucky enough <laughs> be told at like one of our final like showcase classes and she like grabbed my headshot she's like hey my brother's doing this thing blah blah, blah. like are you interested i was like yeah can i audition like what's happening and so and then we ended up in a library you know <laughs> and that that was like i don't know this has been one of the greatest experiences of my entire life and i i, I knew she was perfect i knew my brother would like her <laughs> Excellent. With the long blonde hair. <laughs> 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 and uh, Jessica, how did you get involved? Yeah, I was called in to audition, and I just really adored uh, Todd. And then I met Ashley and their lovely producer, Miss Blenda, and I just I fell madly in love with them. They're great people. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, Natalie just mentioned that it was uh, a great experience, uh, best experience of her life, and. I think you, it was like a 21-day uh, 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 film, uh, sh a shooting. So uh, how, how did that go, and did everyone have a good time? Well, we did a big chunk of our film at once in uh, Lake Arrowhead, and then we sort of uh, did our kills uh, on separate days. So it wasn't a, a 21 days back-to-back. Uh, -back. We did Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we filmed in the Bay Area. We filmed in uh, Los Angeles and uh, Lake Arrowhead. And it was great, although the movie takes place, you know, all at nighttime. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and when you're working on a, a a budget and a time frame, uh, that was uh, that was pretty drastic. Mm -hmm. And also trying not to get the cops called on us when it was screaming. Yes, oh, and yes. you know Jessica Cameron, that girl can scream. Oh my goodness, baby, <laughs> <laughs> chills. Yeah. yeah, we were kind of scared a couple of times that the the cops would be called, and we had people on the lookout. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, if ever you have the cops called because of screaming, all you have to do is tell them you're shooting a movie, because they've done this many times, and they never check further than that. So, <laughs> uh, so you want to kill me? Like, we're making a movie. So always have a video yeah. camera, just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, apparently that's come up for Jessica, and were you always filming a, a movie when you used that excuse? Not so far. All right, okay. So one of these days, <laughs> I do have like I, I do enjoy. Uh, recently, I was at Fantastic Fest just to check out some great films, and I had met these great people, and they were not so familiar with the genre, and they're like, "What do you do for a living?" We have that conversation. Like, I'm a scream queen, and those you have to scream. And I was like, "No, no," because no, outside of Fantastic Fest, there's literally a couple hundred people. There's a DJ. Like, it's packed. And I don't really know many people here. It's not my place. I don't have a movie screening. I'm just here to watch some flicks. So I said no. And they kept on bugging me for about an hour. <laughs> and finally, they're like, we will give you drinks. And of course, you know, that's a magic <laughs> word. So I was like, okay. And I screamed. And throughout the process of my scream, all the music stopped. Everyone shut up. Elijah Wood <laughs> nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> and then by the time I stopped, everybody came up with like a giant round of applause and it was like this big moment. <laughs> so it's really the best marketing for yourself you possibly could have done. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> there, there really is nothing else like it. Like I can't even explain to you. It is really yes. the most amazing scream ever. The range ever. and levels, it's like just like the perfect scream queen scream. Uh, yeah, we all lost our, our breath afterwards. We really weren't prepared for it. It's got to be something really amazing. I mean, it's one thing. You've got a scream queen, and we know what it is, but to be in the presence of it, I think, would be like, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty, they were pretty shocked. I actually, uh, Heather Dorf and I want to do, like, a fun little variety show because Dorf's going through some personal stuff, so I'm a big fan of work through it. So I'm going to make her do a bunch of work. <laughs> nice. I'm the best friend ever. 
Um, and one of the things <laughs> we do is we're going to do a segment called Screen Cam, which is just going to be me going into random large groups, like places where there's large <laughs> groups of people. Oh, my God. And streaming. <laughs> whatever happens, because I think it'll be really funny. And then like, we're going to do it. Hopefully we're going to do it tomorrow night. We're going to test drive this theory. And if I get in trouble, I'm going to say I saw a spider. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna wear different outfits and stuff so people don't figure out this is who you are yeah oh yeah yeah it's gonna be so funny too of course like heather is like completely panic attack mode because she's like there's terrorists jessica they're gonna think you have a bomb and i was like nobody's gonna think i have a bomb <laughs> like come on no i mean that's I'm- the thing they'd think maybe someone else near you had a bomb but not you yourself would be like ah i'm in trouble now ah you're in trouble Exactly. I was usually, I'm in trouble. Well, I'm just going to look down, point, and be like, I saw a spider. You come up with weirder and weirder excuses as you go, too. It starts with <laughs> spider, and then it's like, there's an alien behind you, and just go crazy. I thought I, I, I saw, thought I saw a ghost. <laughs> um, I'm going to use the stress line at some point because I just think it's funny. <laughs> no. Nope. You can't get at me then. <laughs> Now, uh, for to become a scream queen, to perfect the scream, was this something you had to work on, or it, would it just come naturally? You know what? It was actually just sort of a natural gift, and I kind of stumbled upon the realization that I had it. I was working uh, through my university at bars, waitressing, and one night when a fight broke out and nobody, none of the bouncers could get to the people fighting, because there's literally like 100 people surrounding them, I just started screaming bloody murder and everybody stopped the fight stopped the people cheering stopped everyone just came to a dead halt and then the bouncers were able to like plow their way through and i pointed at the people that were doing it and they got removed and it kind of just became like my superhero power pardon Black Canary. The Black Canary, that's her power. Oh. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I started doing that, and then uh, it would progress where when I moved to Ohio with a bunch of my college friends to work in fashion, we got really lost all the time, and when we would get lost, this is before everyone had GPSs on their phones, we'd get lost in the middle of Ohio, which is a lot of barren, desolate horror movie kind of places, and one of the girls in the car was like, okay, let's all do our horror movie scream, and I went last. And they nearly drove off the road. And like, that is not fucking cool. That's really insane. Um, and that's kind of when I first realized. I was like, oh, there's something different here. Mm. Mm. Maybe, Todd, you can write a, a Banshee movie for Jessica next. Uh, absolutely. I would write anything for Jessica next. <laughs> I've already kind of told them that I'm just going to show up on their sets whether I'm invited or not. <laughs> 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 just start screaming. <laughs> it does. I mean, that's the kind of the cool thing about screaming is that you don't have to. You just scream, and people know you can do it. It's not like, hey, watch me dance, and then you kind of like got to keep them from running away or saying, "Stop it!" You just scream, and it's there, and it's either, "Oh my god, you're amazing," or not. But it sounds like you're, you know, universally considered amazing for screaming. So, yeah. <laughs> We all have our skills. When I die, it's going to say that on my tombstone. <laughs> Highly regarded <laughs> <for the thing. laughs> No, uh, uh, Todd men- mentioned the movie, you know, 80 Styles, uh, a slasher film, and uh, that seems to, you know, be making like a comeback. Uh, wh- why do you think that is? Because it brings back to when horror movies were, were fun, were a good time. And I think that people are, are wanting to have a good time with the kinds of things that are, are going on. I mean, it's not, you know, the only type of horror movie, but it, it's definitely if you're a horror movie fan and you want your variety, um, it's, a, it's a nice change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, what do you think, what was, what's been going on in horror that you kind of wanted to steer away and do this particular kind? What's some stuff that you're trying to put, not like you don't like the other films, but... Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. And I guess for me, it would have to be, and of course, because I, I do love this movie a lot. I love the movie Scream. But I think that Scream really took over the horror genre and and, and took away our, our mass monsters. And mm-hmm. I wanted to bring that back. So I, I really tried to stay away from Scream and really get back to the, you know, the, the good old 80s. Mm-hmm. 
And really, after Scream, so many horror movies became like uh, self-referential, where you know it was yeah, all absolutely. you know everyone's in on the joke. Mm-hmm. And there were teenagers and you know stuff like that. And I, I, I really wanted to go back to the Madman and and not make it that type of self-aware horror movie. Mm-hmm. So uh, speaking of Mad Men, we uh, Leto as the Mad Men uh, uh, killer. What were some of the? Uh, now you said you you had experience, you know, dressing as different uh, characters, but mm-hmm. you know, uh, for the movie, uh, what were some of the things you really had to focus on, you know, to get your character across? Well, well, let's see. Um, I'm a big fan of Halloween. The original Halloween is my favorite film of all time. Mm-hmm. So. I, I, I know that film back and forth. I've seen it hundreds of times. I've studied Nick Castle's performance. I actually sp- have spent a lot of you know opportunities in L.A. I've taken a lot of opportunities appearing as Michael Myers for official uh, Halloween events that were put on by the Trankus Company. So I've, I've done their conventions and I've done the shapes, you know, walk and, and mannerisms for so long that I was at a Halloween convention one year, and uh, Rick Rosenthal, the guy who directed Halloween 2, he saw me come walking into the room and walking towards him, and he looked at me, and he paused, and he kind of squinted his eyes, and he said, Dick? Because he thought it was the Dick Warlock, the guy that actually mm-hmm. performed uh, Michael Myers for Halloween 2. And later on, someone told him, no, it's not Dick. It's this, this guy that we've hired that's you know does all of our conventions and our shows. And Rick Rosenthal, actually, a few hours later, came up to me, and he said, you know, you were so good as as Dick Warlock that I actually thought you were him. So whatever you're doing, keep it up. So I'm like I said, it's kind of a weird you know hobby to have. But um, I spent a lot of time when I was a kid studying clowning and studying miming and studying Greek mask um, technique. And a lot of that involves getting across your emotions with your eyes and your body language without really you know saying anything. So I'd had a lot of I guess, history and practice doing that. And again, being a huge horror film fan, I've studied the performances of all my favorite, you know, monsters from Robert Englund to Kane Hodder to Nick Castle to, you know, Richard Booker, God rest his soul. And and I just, I, I looked at all of that as a kind of giant body of work. And then I looked at the script and I looked at the character and figured out this is what this scene calls for. But overall, this is what this character the body language needs to be a certain way because we, we don't want to spoil anything, but this story necessitates certain aspects of the psyche to come out at different times. And so I just tried to let my body do the talking. It's, it's kind of weird, but um, you, you let your body and your eyes do the talking. And, and then, of course, the rest is instinctual. Whenever you, you put on a mask and you chase a beautiful woman, whether you're, whether you're trying to be scary or not, you're, you know, there's something primitive inside you. If you're able to tap into that, it just kind of takes over. And, and as long as you don't fight it, it's not too hard to get into that, you know, quote unquote place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds like it's okay. all, you know, Saturday night for me. You, oh, I'm sorry. What was that? No, nothing. Go on, Annabelle. Uh, character is really interesting and I'm I'm not going to give anything away but there are definitely the twists in this to the story I think are are very different from any other slasher type film I've seen you you get into subject matter like this and in some other stuff that might be a little bit more serious or maybe it's not as effective but I thought it really worked well in this film Thank you. Yeah, and Lita really does an amazing job because you know it's not just like you said wearing a mask and a costume. And I and I always say this: I say that Lito transcends the mask, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you see his character with all this whole getup on, and yeah. he really brings a lot to the movie. I thank you. <laughs> and you you really got a lot of good shots of uh, Lito's eyes, you know, under the mask in the movie. Oh, yeah, I wanted to take advantage of that. Because, you know, we can have all these beautiful uh, screen queens, which we do, obviously, mm-hmm. my sister and Jessica and Natalie. Um, but the killer is really the star of the show. If, if he doesn't work, or she, or whatever doesn't work, then the movie doesn't really work. Yeah. So a lot of rides on that. Mm-hmm. It's very rare any kind of film with uh, an antagonist can be successful, yeah. unless that antagonist is in- incredibly strong. And Lito, people cosplay as you. <laughs> that, that will be weird. Maybe I'll just go as myself. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. the mask itself is, I don't want to st- just stay on the killer, but uh, while we're here, the mask itself is excellent. And the the coloring is weird, and it, you wouldn't think of it for Santa. And uh, But it's really, it seems to work because it is very different. But sometimes, like the um, the Annabel doll and those movies, I don't remember what the hell they're called. There's so many movies like that now. But you know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, the Conjuring? Yeah. I feel yeah. like that is, and Neil and I both agree, that that's so stylized, it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel like it really fits for the story as well as like a more plain looking doll. This is a really stylized mask, but it really seems to work. I don't think it feels out of place at all. Or like, this is just a cool looking mask. We tossed on to Santa Claus. It's, I don't know. It's, it, I really like it. It's very unique. It's not just like, it has a metallic feel to like, it. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. We had a, a, a photo shoot of a bunch of different masks with beards and, trying different things. And this definitely was the one that spoke and we all knew it. It was like, yeah. this is it. Yeah. I can't this imagine yeah. using any of the other masks. Now. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, it also, it also gave the ability because of the way it was shaped and the way it was, the way it, it sat on my face, it, it allowed the eyes to pop a lot, which again helps with the performance. Cause there's certain shots where you don't see the eyes because of, you know, where, the way I'm staged, but there's shots, like you said, where you really can see the eyes because they really do pop from the mask as opposed to like Jason's mask where the eyes are kind of set inside. So you so, can't really see it. And speaking of, you know, the mask, the effectiveness, effectiveness of the mask, you should ask Natalie what she thinks of the mask. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that, she loves it, right, Natalie? Uh, so don't leave that on her, her passenger car seat is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my, <laughs> my one time, Lido, I was, I had something like I was wearing that red dress, and Lido came to help me fix it, and I turned around, and he was wearing the entire outfit, and I screamed, and I ran out of the room. <laughs> and I was like, we need, we need a break. <laughs> Her screams oh, are very um, real in this. <laughs> Does that it's help? All very yeah. real. I would assume that would help to to get into the role if you are actually scared by the, by the mask and the, and the character. I'm um, personally, I don't particularly am fond of Santa. I've cried on his lap since I was a little kid, so you know, that <laughs> up to this day. <laughs> uh, Ashley, uh, what did you think of the mask? Uh, did that help you uh, uh, performance? Did you find it uh, creepy? Well, it was definitely like Lito's performance that helped me like make it feel like it's re- like the situation is real. Mm-hmm. Um, he really helped in that. Um, when we were doing, when we were trying on the masks, I I knew right away. I could tell just from the way Lito was was moving around. I I knew that this one was going to be it. <laughs> I just knew it. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jess, uh, Jessica, though, what did you think of Alito's performance? And uh, had you two ever uh, worked together before? We had not worked together before. Um, I thought it was really strong and really powerful. You know, we have a really great way to carry himself that ignites fear. And I don't mean that to be like, <laughs> it, it sounds like it's a bad thing, but it's a good, I mean, it's a bad thing in your personal life, I'm sure, but it's great. <laughs> on- <laughs> He's over here flexing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that. Uh, you did. How did the um, the premiere go on Halloween? The premiere went amazing on Halloween. Yeah, it was a great. There was a an excitement, and uh, it was so much fun. And it was funny because Jessica had said that you know she told me so it's never going to be like this. You know, it's your first premiere. You know, it's like that's this is a you special were one. Right? Oh my god! And yeah, she was of course she was so right. Um, <laughs> even though we had an amazing time at, at another hole in the head, and we're looking yes. forward to Portland for the yes. PD Extreme uh, December fifth, uh, and Mania Jessica Cameron's Mania is also going to be there. So mm. if you guys are in Portland, uh, you should get some tickets because it's going to be a blast. Headless is also playing, and Last Girl Standing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of good things about Headless too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it's an interesting film. It's it's quite uh, it's quite shocking. It was actually directed by my friend Scott Shermer, who's an old friend, uh, filmmaker, a filmmaking friend of mine from Bloomington, Indiana. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was great, and that was actually available. So if you don't live in Portland, you can actually buy that movie, <laughs> yep. which I highly recommend. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so we talked a lot about Leto and the villain. How is it for you ladies to have like there you are and you're you're a person. You don't have a mask. You don't have a costume. You're not wielding a weapon. So how is it for you trying to build up your characters to kind of like hold your own next to this big figure, this force? Um, I was trying to channel my Jamie Lee Curtis. I was like brought up aspire being like wanting to, to be like her. So um, I was just trying to, you know, bring out my vulnerability mm-hmm. and being strong. I'm all about. Having well, my brother and I are all about you know strong female characters, and I definitely see myself as that. My character uh, is not strong. Uh, she does not hold <laughs> um, and I feel like that's pretty clear. Anytime you see pictures of me in a shower, I mean, I get to survive. Anytime, <laughs> any movie, it's always a bad sign for me. Always, Doesn't every it- time, like. It's down to the point where when the director told me, so when you talk with the shower, I'm like, gosh, darn it. I die in the shower, don't I? And they're like, well, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of. Maybe someday you could at least, you could start out, you'll fight back a little bit and then slowly but surely. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a movie where everybody has ridiculous numbers of shower scenes and they all live. (laughs) And it's going to be like the (laughs) shower guy. That would be an awesome horror short. (laughs) If you did a horror short of that, everybody would crack up. They'd love it. Hilarious. It's so true. Like of showers. <laughs> I just did a drama, and it was the same thing. And I was like, drama? And he, I, he, he pitched me the role, the director. And I was like, I love it. I love everything about it. It's like this anti-bullying, coming-of-age drama story. And then he's mm-hmm. like, but there's a shower scene. I was like, gosh darn it. I died in a shower <laughs> in a drama. I'm like, I'm supposed to live. It's a drama film. Oh I man! I see a sketchy typecast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Natalie, I mean, funny, mm-hmm. was like, everyone was uh, running around being like, "Are you comfortable?" I was like, "Oh yes, I'm pretty much at this point as comfortable in a shower around an entire cast and crew <laughs> as I am at home shower by myself." <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Natalie, what about your character? Well, I think that, like, when you, anytime you read a script or a scene, you always have to take what, what really, like, makes you tick about the character. And so when I approached Gia, she was obviously a little bit more high-strung than I am and, and likes to shop a little bit more than me. But there's definitely the parts where I'm getting chased and stalked that, that really brought it to just me and and. When me and Leo were on set that day, I remember us just, like, working with each other and just being terrified and all day. And so I think that there's a realness that I always want to bring to my characters that provides what they need for the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoy the uh, the opening uh, theme song on the movie. It takes me, it yeah. took you, like, a few seconds to, to realize that, you know, the words were different than, than what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. But uh, that, that was great. Uh uh, who who did the who did the theme song? Um, who actually? Uh, uh, I and another actress, Kathy Garrett, actually rewrote the words to it because I wanted to really get in the uh, uh, the "Here Comes Santa" mm-hmm. 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 Uh, uh, coming on. Watch out for Santa! Here comes Santa! And so we wrote those words, but Dave uh, Cochran is the one who performed and, sa- and sang the song, and he did it a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love it because it has a, fam- uh, you know, it's familiar, but then it's it's different. So it, like I said, it took a few seconds to realize that, but it, it totally works for the movie. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it just goes to set the tone of what we're we're doing. We want you to have fun. Uh, we want you to be scared too. We want you to to be shocked by all the grossness, but we also want you to have fun mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, who is doing the gore effects in the movie? Uh, Tommy Peach and Josh McCarran. And, yeah, they were great. Mm-hmm. They were mm-hmm. really great. Uh, we were very lucky. Tommy Peach is from, uh, was on so- uh, the sci-fi show uh, um, Face Off. Face Off. Oh, nice. Yeah. That show is excellent. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, and he went pretty far on it, and he's also worked on Star Trek, uh, Renegades. So, 
so he had some experience. And, uh, and I told him when I met him, I, I said, you know what? I need to chop somebody's fingers off. If you can do that, you can do everything else that I'm asking for. Nice. <laughs> you know, I, I think this is the first horror movie I saw where uh, hedge clippers is like the uh, is the main uh, uh, weapon. <laughs> Uh, what 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 made you decide to go with the hedge clippers? Well, it fits into the story. It's not you know so not just like okay, here's a killer, let's give him an axe, and that's your your weapon. Mm -hmm. I mean, these hedge clippers are a part of him, and they have a lot of meaning to them when you see the movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, why he chooses those that weapon in particular. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot easier than scissors. scissors. A lot easier in scissors, you know. <laughs> scissors could be a lot messier, you know. We, we, we <laughs> could have gone either way. I feel like with weapons, too, a lot of the time, bigger is better. Definitely. Yeah. Especially, yeah. that has that could be an underlining meaning in the movie, too. Mm. It's better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that, yeah. I remember back in the day, Cisco and Ebert would, would always go to that and... Uh, uh, why they didn't like horror movies because of uh, yeah. the, the weapons and <laughs> yeah they did like Halloween though they loved Halloween mm -hmm. but then yeah they started saying that these movies were made by men who hate women I never really understood that because for me I love women I love women characters I love Wonder Woman I love mm -hmm. strong women I love Jamie Lee Curtis and I always saw these characters as as action heroes this is like mm -hmm. this is the 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 female action movie, which is a horror movie, they they have to experience the same type of, of things that like Rambo does, you know, and all his his friends. This is Bill Johnson, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. Feed your head. All right, we're back. Sorry for uh, momentary momentary uh, de technical difficulties, but we played some Don Pettit music, so uh, that was very cool. Artist of the Yeah. Shout out to Don. We love you. Mm -hmm. Good shout out for it. He's he's a great guy, and he really has uh, some very cool music. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, we mentioned uh, the premiere, and uh, you guys are going to be in Portland. Um, so right now, the, the how you see the movie is uh, if you're going to be at like a film festival. But um, how else are going to pe are people going to be able to uh, see the movie? Well, there are some things in the works right now. I. I don't really want to uh, spill the beans on anything, but uh, there should be an announcement coming sometime soon. Hmm. In other words, it's not allowed right now. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And even though you guys do have a reference to Krampus in the movie, I think this is the only uh, Christmas horror <laughs> movie in the last like 10 years that's not about Krampus. Well, maybe two. Two years, yeah. It's just really, it's Krampus has really taken off in the last few years. Yeah, Krampus has, and I'm, I'm so glad we didn't do anything uh, Krampus related because of that. Me uh, too. But uh, <laughs> there are definitely some other Santa movies on the uh, horizon. Hmm. Christmas is taking over. Yeah, Christmas horror is really just sort of taking over, and it just so happened that I wasn't the only one who saw that there was sort of a. Uh, a need for some more Christmas horror. <laughs> so for Christmas horror, what are, uh, what are some of your favorite Christmas horror films? All you guys. <laughs> well, mine is Black Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, Black Christmas. Yeah, that's one that doesn't, it doesn't get as much play as some of the other ones, but it is good. We usually yeah. run like a movie thing for Without Your Head where we have the, uh, 13 Dark Days of Christmas. So we've we've seen a lot of different Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. Any any love for uh, elves? Elves. <laughs> elves is great. Love that It's too. freaking crazy. Uh, it, uh, it's probably not good if you don't watch it with other people. But it's fun. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's a riot. Uh, I'm a big fan of Jack Frost. Yeah, that's a lot of people are. Yeah, Jack Frost. Yeah. I like the second one with all the little babies in uh, it's, it's my favorite snowman uh, sex scene ever on film. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've that in my life. Uh, yeah. It just like a Cameron is no stranger to Christmas uh, horror movies. Oh, I think no. Yeah, I was going to be that obnoxious actress who says her own movie. I have a small role, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> what it movie? does. You I do really good in there. Pardon? 
you're there and you were really good in it too. Thank you. I, I, so I know good, I, I love you to it. It's also one of my favorite remakes because uh, I think they really yeah. did the remake right. And I feel like often the remake is not done right. Mm-hmm. And I think that they did a great job with it. Steven yeah, Spino they did a great job mm-hmm. with the color and the lighting and the atmosphere. And that's one of the things that's really important to me with a Christmas movie is that they have that atmosphere and not just a couple of uh, of paper Santas hanging on the wall. Yeah, definitely. You got to get the because there's and it's funny because there's so much opportunity because there's so many different kinds of lights and decorations. You'd think, and you could just yeah. buy. I mean, I I assume that for for what you do in your movies, you could just go out and buy all that stuff. Um, well, it took them a long time to get all that stuff, and my apartment was filled for an entire year with Christmas stuff. <laughs> with the swap and geeks and garage sales uh, and online, everything you could possibly imagine. Like, if I wanted Christmas to, like, look like it threw up all over my movie. Definitely. But that's it. Like you said, that's it's kind of like the hedge clippers. You have to have it big. I mean, that's the thing. They the Movies are larger than life. So when you're doing a fun movie... It's not about subtlety. It's about, it's almost like a, a terrifying and weird cartoon, like a really dark, crazy mm-hmm. cartoon. You want it to be big yeah. and over the top. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Hmm. I'd assume you guys are all in LA, so uh, you're not, you don't, you don't get snow out there for Christmas. No, not so much. Not so much. But snow would have been great. And that was, you know, again, another reason we were going to have snow. So we had to go heavy on lights heavy on trees and mannequins and and red. Lots of red. <laughs> the, but we're excited about Portland. We had, we had uh, snow mm. right now. Going there really? Mm-hmm. We've been so lucky to not have snow yet. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're from California when you are excited that there's going to be snow. And you're like, yes. Not to go too far into snow, but Boston... Boston had record snow last year, and it never melted. We had 55 inches of snow. Wow. And how much ice cream do you guys eat? Ice cream up there in the middle of winter, it makes no logical sense. It's delicious. (laughs) It's the logic of it tastes amazing. (laughs) When I I visit my friends there, in the middle of a snowstorm, we trek outside to go into a cold ice cream shop to eat cold (laughs) ice cream. It doesn't make logical sense. Yes. Snow cone. It tastes yeah. good. Uh, when I it's got to just be delicious ice cream. Yeah. When I was a kid, my mom. In the world when I was a kid, my mom and I used to make a snow ice cream where you actually take the snow and you add like milk and sugar and you make an ice cream out of it. Wow, That's complicated. I just put maple syrup in mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe nowadays. <laughs> you probably don't want to do it nowadays. But back in the day, it was good. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Oh man, so, New Englanders. <laughs> uh, so when you when you did have the premiere and you said Jessica said uh, you know never be like this again, uh, what did she mean by that? Was uh, was it fun? Was it nerve wracking? It is. It's just an experience. It's like your first time. It's, it's like just the excitement. Yeah, um, it's a feeling mm-hmm. that I will probably chase for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, what is that experience like to to see the movie with other people? What you know, they're watching your film up there, and uh, you know, I would think that would be nerve wracking because you're hoping they yeah, you know, it, they react positively. It is <laughs> surreal. It is really surreal. It's almost like while the movie was playing, I held my breath the whole time, like I didn't breathe until it was over, uh, because that's at the moment where you get to check to see if everything that you tried to do actually. Worked. I was literally sitting on the edge of my seat the whole time. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, it's when you can find out, did the laughs work? Are people, yeah. are they going to get it? Do they get the, you know, some of the stuff that we did, you know, or is, is that, it, it's a moment when it all comes together. And it's exciting, it's nerve-wracking, it's, it's everything. It's why I love making movies. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like it. Was, is there a particular scene that seems to be uh, the favorite uh, with the with the live crowds, and and maybe it was something that surprised you? Um, you know what? I it, it didn't necessarily surprise me, but it made me happy 
that, you know, it, it was well received. There were a couple of scenes that got huge reactions from the audience, one in, involving a sweet little old lady in a wheelchair, <laughs> which I, <laughs> <laughs> which just every time that's shown, people just can't believe it, and they just go nuts for it. And uh, another one in, involving uh, a guy tied to a bed and a cat. <laughs> that was a favorite. Yeah. Yes. Uh, now, what, what, do you have any favorite? Uh, what was the hardest uh, scene to actually shoot? The hardest. Well, the hardest scenes in these types of movies to shoot is, is always anything that involves a lot of moving and action, fight scenes and chase scenes. Those take a lot of time because you're going from one location to the next location and only doing little bits. And so you got to light it and you got to, you know, do everything you'd have to do for a big conversation. And so they're very time consuming, but I love doing fight scenes, chase scenes and, and kill scenes. We did a kill scene and we ended up uh, being at, it was uh, six o'clock in the morning and the sun was coming yeah. up and everybody <laughs> on the set got this high from doing this kill scene and nobody could go back to sleep. That's so true. <laughs> Yeah, nothing. It, everybody's on set and on edge and having a good time when someone's getting killed. <laughs> <laughs> and all that fun must really... I would think when you go into the theater to watch it, it would really throw off your ideas of, of is this going to be well-received? Because you put in so much of yourselves, you put in so much work, and you have so much fun together that it's like, well, does that translate? Or do I have this distortion yeah. of reality? Absolutely, and you're questioning yourself all the time. And, I mean, that's a good thing. You always want to keep on your toes and not you know, look at anything lightly. You want to make sure that you're, it's going to be funny. And when people, when you're upset and people are laughing or go, ooh, or getting scared or Gia screaming at Lido, you know, <laughs> those are good things. <laughs> no, we'll never live that down. <laughs> Is there any yeah. chance we'll, we'll see a sequel? There's definitely a talk of a sequel. In fact, when uh, I presented this script to the producers, they were interested in something that could be a franchise. So mm -hmm. I did explain uh, where the second and the third one can go and how it could all come back together and make a full circle. So there, there is much more to the mythology of these characters and what we see seen in this first movie, although you may not seem like it, but there's there's a lot more going on. So sequel is definitely being talked about. I don't know when that will be done. I don't know if I could do another Christmas themed movie again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or at least that too. So will this be like the second Silent Night, Deadly Night, where you have a totally unrelated character going over the the backstory <laughs> of the original main character? For forty minutes. It it's pretty hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, you never know what could happen, but uh, <laughs> probably, probably not like that. Mm -hmm. You said <laughs> garbage day. You gotta love garbage day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, love garbage day. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the whole film, really. But, uh, it's pretty hilarious. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. said you're not doing another, uh, maybe not doing another uh, Christmas theme movie. What are some of the, the holidays that, that you would like to make, uh, or you think deserve a, uh, a a horror film? Well, Valentine's Day is always a great day, and mm -hmm. Halloween it still works. You know, there's still so much more to explore mm -hmm. with the Halloween uh, season. Honestly, I don't think there are really that many horror movies besides, you know, there's a lot of Halloween sequels, but there aren't really that many Halloween horror movies out there. I think there's actually, there might be more Christmas horror movies than Halloween movies. Yeah, but and, now, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, then the really obvious ones. Hey, there's some where it, it, maybe there's some little reference to it, but full-blown, mm -hmm. this is a Halloween. Yeah. This is Halloween time of year, and this is Halloween. This is what's happening. Yeah, I think people might be afraid to go hit it too much on the, the head with that because Halloween is so popular. It's like doing another Friday the 13th. You know, this takes place on Friday the 13th, and everyone's like, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think Valentine's Day isn't more tapped? Because it, 
a lot of people are not happy on Valentine's Day. That brings a lot of grief to to much of the world. And you'd think that that would translate into lots of people at least wanting to do horror movies about that kind of vibe and just taking yeah, that, you know, you know, like a lot of horror does, it takes a, a human emotion that's normal and just makes it just out there, just so where normal people don't yeah. go. Yeah, there's lots of, of opportunity there. I think there's only been two. Yeah. Valentine's Day, and then the remake of My Bloody Valentine. Right. Yeah. And I think Valentine's, the movie with Denise Richards, I think uh, that film tried to exploit that kind of idea of the jilted, you know, uh, romance or the kid that doesn't get any dates or whatever. I just think, uh, with all due respect to those filmmakers, they didn't live up to what they had in mind. Yeah. You know, they were also trying to scream. And they were also doing, yeah, yeah they were copying scream, as yeah. Todd just yeah. said. So instead of coming from a pure essence, they kind of were just, you know, cloning, as a lot of films yeah. do in the wake of another horror film that's successful. And I mean, again, not to take anything away from them because who knows, you know, what happened. But I mean, I. I thought the result was a mixed bag, but I think that's the only one that's tried to really tap into that kind mm-hmm. of idea. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. <laughs> I don't know of any other one. So whether or not they made it, it never really hit people hard enough where it, we we know what it is. I think there's also yeah. a real lack of Easter horror films. <laughs> yeah, Easter's a hard one, man, because it's just not scary. It doesn't have the same sort of elements that Christmas does. And you know, it's scary and funny. It's scary and funny. Exactly. See, it's a that's... strange bunny coming in your home. <laughs> and a bunny isn't even supposed to be like a human and talking and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it just doesn't it's work. But I love the what, oh, what if you had it not just about the Easter bunny, but more about the pagan side? Because a lot of the origins of Easter are pagan, and they were blended with Christianity. And then it could be almost like Wicker Man kind of weirdness. <laughs> you need to write a movie. I need someone to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> There's also always this, uh, Zombie Jesus. Jesus rises on yeah. Easter. That's zombie tough. Zombie Jesus. <laughs> That's tough. I don't know if that would make it to the big screen. <laughs> well, not, but... but it would be fun to watch. <laughs> exactly. It would be. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you, you got the killer bunny too. I, I think it was just yeah. There's the Bunny Man, mm-hmm. and then there's yeah. There's, there's a couple of them. There's a couple of them. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's not very many Thanksgiving either. I think it's just uh, the one with the killer turkey there. Thanks killing. Yeah, the turkey one. Thanks killing or yeah. Yeah, that's funny, too. The talking turkey that kills people. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> Cena is I know. Fucking I've, I've, I've seen everything. It's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, and I believe that just goes from uh, Thanks Killing to Thanks Killing 3. I don't think there's a... Yeah, yeah. Yes. it they yes. heard the second third film. <laughs> I, I enjoy that. So uh, the website's all through the house, movie.com. And uh, where else is the best place for people to find the information on the movie and where they can see it? Well, you can find us on Facebook mm-hmm. and Twitter. And IMDb. And you can get all kinds of information there. Exactly. So uh, you got Portland coming up. Uh, anything after that? Um, we're going to see what happens after that. I can't really too much. <laughs> keep an eye. Keep an eye on all, all, all the on the website, IMDb, on and Facebook, and you'll find out. Yes, absolutely. So like us on Facebook, please. Definitely keep it updated. Yes. Yeah. So Twitter might be the way to go for the the moment to moment updates because I know I've got a million likes on Facebook and I never end up seeing anything. But if you're on Twitter, you just get your little blip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a Facebook man, but uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I am too. I'm a Facebook man. I like Facebook for communication, but I feel like updates. Twitter is nice because it's so yeah. everything is so brief. You could just scroll it real yeah. easy. Let's do that. So, uh, uh, anything coming up uh, for each of you individually that we keep we should keep an eye out for? Uh, well, I am uh, definitely starting another movie that I am not able to reveal the title of just yet. But it is in the works. It's going to be exciting, and I will let you know as soon as I can. Well, uh, the details. 
So that's me. Mm -hmm. Alito. Um, I'm scoring three films in a row within the next four to five weeks. I'm scoring uh, the Fright Night documentary that's called You're So Cool, Brewster, The Story of awesome. Fright Night. And then I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm scoring Mark Patton's documentary, Screen Queen. Oh, nice. And then I'm scoring something after that that I can't talk about. Oh, man. Stop that. <laughs> Alito's score of the um, of the Hellraiser documentary is uh, is excellent as well. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I loved it. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> uh, Ashley. Um, I'm in the process of reading a couple of scripts. I've been approached um, to read for some roles that I'm really excited about and also uh, continuing to work alongside my brother. So I'm excited about that as well. And uh, just continuing taking acting classes and going out on auditions. Yeah, Jessica Cameron dubbed us the brother-sister duo, and we have ran with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think that's great. Uh, uh, as Annabelle mentioned earlier, Troy here on the show is my older brother, and uh, uh, he he didn't make me, but uh, I watched the uh, horror movie since I was like, since I can remember, because single I'm mom, yeah, I was single mom, yes. so she would take Troy to the to the drive-in instead of uh, instead of getting a, a babysitter, you know, take me along. I have like five or six, seeing like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but what the hell? Yeah. Uh, Natalie. Um, well, I have a web series that I'm working on currently, and then from there, we've also, I've actually started writing with a partner, and we're working on um, a short film, and okay. hopefully going to turn that into a web series as well. Uh, do, is there a website or something that people can find that on? Not yet. Oh, we're yeah. not allowed to reveal yet. All right, all right. Well, let us know yeah, when we're we we'll let everybody know. <laughs> and uh, Jessica. Awesome. Uh, well, I'm, you know me, I'm not one for holding back details. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, here's what it is. Come out the hell out of it. <laughs> uh, Mania is currently doing a festival around, so we're going to be playing uh, next. We actually just got in, and we won Best Feature at the Los Angeles Underground Film Festival screening, and we're going to be screening November 28th, so hopefully we'll see everyone there. Then following that, we're screening uh, in Portland Extreme, as well as A Night of Horror in Australia on December 5th, so we hope to see you there. And then we have a bunch more film festivals tied up right into the new year, so stay tuned. You can look for the details on the menu pages for that. Uh, Desolations in Post, Kill the PA is being converted into a TV series, so that's in post-production. We're in pre-production on this haunted hospital tale that we're going to be shooting early next year that I'll be starring in as well as directing. Uh, we are at scripting stage uh, of Truth and Air 2, the sequel, so keep an eye out for that. We are going through distribution details and working through dates, hoping for a late release and or early next year release for Truth or Air in North America, followed subsequently by territories all around the world with that. Um, I just wrapped South 32, and I've got a sci-fi movie that I'm going to be shooting in December, and then Rift to Shreds will be the first film I likely shoot in the new year, so keep an eye out for that. And then I'm also developing... Uh, a variety web series show with my best friend, Heather Dorf, and it's going to be called The Scream Queen Stream, so keep your eyes open for that. Very cool. Do you have time to sleep? <laughs> uh, that will just depend on whether or not I'm acting in Todd's movie or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. Well, we really appreciate all of you guys coming on tonight. It's been great. We really thank enjoyed all the time. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. We had thank also you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I wasn't sure. I'm like, man, I don't know. And Neil's even said before, like having a lot of guests on, maybe not. But it's worked out really well. Happy all of you were here. Yeah, so we were happy to be here. Mm -hmm. So this is the record. Uh, you guys have the record for the most number of guests on at one time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it be <laughs> Oh well, yeah. <laughs> That was that was just strange. Yeah, we, had, we uh, just had random people that didn't yeah. introduce themselves. Off. <laughs> <laughs> For people, it was Mark uh, Borshant from. Uh, you probably familiar with the documentary, not documentary. Uh, what is, uh, was it American movie? American horror movie or just American movie, but we had yeah. him on the show and f he was at a house party for some reason he decided to pass his phone around. So we ended up talking to just <laughs> friends of the guy and it was, it was very bizarre, but this went a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so all through the house, you guys, uh, if it's coming to, uh, 
if you come into like festival near you or a convention near you, definitely check it out. And um, and eventually you'll be able to see it somewhere else once uh once they're allowed to yeah. say. Yeah. Santa Claus <laughs> is coming to town. <laughs> hey. Yeah. So uh, coming up here, we got a Don Pettit music, and again, thank you guys all for coming on, and all of you are welcome you. back anytime thank you'd you. like. Thank you. We had a blast. Thank, thank you guys. You. No problem. This is PJ Souls, and you are totally listening to Without Your Head Horror Radio. <laughs> 